All right, everybody, we are back for another uh, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> wait, Livia, where's yours? Livia's like, <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, I hope you do this at home with us, okay? Movement is powerful, and you'll you'll be right in the frequency with us. So I'm so excited for um, our next interview because in the world right now, we are so overstimulated, most of us. Most of us are going. There's always something in the background, news, social media, likes, posts, articles, TikTok reels, all the things. And so our nervous systems are like on overdrive. And if you're here, many of you are entrepreneurs, coaches, thought leaders, consultants. So you're not only doing all of that, you have families that you're managing and working with that are doing all that and companies. I mean, you're driving a vision and you're doing all that in the middle of a time when the world is saying recession is coming or is upon us and you know we just got out of covid so we went through a whole you know global time out and nervous system shock and so you know being prepared to navigate all of that and yet stay the the centered force that gets to grow your business, make an impact in the world, have a beautiful family or, or adventures in life, whatever your version of that is, um, knowing how to manage the stress and, and all of that and to be functional is super duper important. So our next guest, Jim Cool, who is the CEO of Newcom, which by the way, I've heard Tony Robbins is an investor in there. Um, I'm a user of Newcom, has developed an incredible clinically tested technology that will absolutely help you uh, move like a monk in the world. Or you have a cool phrase. What is it, Jim? Like, act like a boss, do all the things, but feel like a monk. I don't know. It's something like that. It's something like that. So super important. Uh, Jim, welcome. Welcome to our show. And of course, you all know Livia, uh, our awesome uh, Project Uprise uh, founder. Welcome, Hi, everybody. Jim. Welcome. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So what is that phrase about monk and boss or like, we can make up a new I, one. I but. can think like a like a monk and live like a capitalist. Oh, yeah. You like that, Livia? <laughs> yeah. So a very, it's a very powerful juxtaposition. And I wish that the world would get to a place where we all were in that space. But uh, to your point, um, we're in a uniquely uh, challenging time as a human race. In fact, as we discuss this, most people would kind of ponder if you stop and reflect that the human race appears to be in a race to erase the human race. That's not a good thing. So we sit as a neuroscience company, 33 years into building the perfect mousetrap in the form of very advanced physics and mathematics and algorithms and software and biosignal processing disks. Um, I sit at the helm of an organization that is a true mission-based company. And mission-based companies are really fun to be a part of because you find that a mission-based company is honorable and integrous, but they always do the right thing when nobody's looking. And so sometimes they're the best kept secret because we're not out doing self-aggrandizing applausal for ourselves. We're here to help and serve. And so this organization, Project Uprise, and the opportunity to help people that are really challenged on the furthest extreme of stress chronic stress, hypervigilance, trauma, conflict, uh, complex trauma. Who wouldn't want to help a victim of sex trafficking? I mean, it's an amazing, amazing noble endeavor. So we're really proud to be a part of this. And I think we'll end up being an integral part of the therapeutic value of people actually getting into a healing state. So before I start about New Calm and, the, and the, what we do, I'd like to just share with the audience just some fundamental concepts of being human. I think there's, uh, in our education system and how we've evolved, uh, we've forgotten simple educational pieces that we all should really know. For example, 
let's just talk about the brain for a second. The brain as in how it has evolved. Now, there are a couple aspects of our brain that are really important for us to understand so that we can understand our behavior and be a lot less judgmental of ourselves and others. Number one is we have what's called a primordial reptile brain. That doesn't sound that evolved. Well, it doesn't sound that evolved. Take notes, it. people. I'm taking notes on an envelope. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Yes, primordial the reptile blue brain. brain would not be confused for higher consciousness, right? So the reptile brain is amazing. And the reptile brain is designed to keep us alive. Primarily function is fight, flight, or freeze. So we are in a state of panic and we're in a state of vulnerability and danger. This part of our brain is networked to create fight, flight, or freeze. But it also this part of our brain manages fear, stress, anxiety, depression, and worry. This is really important that we understand this because when we understand the neuronal circuitry and how our brains are wired, we'll have a better understanding of some of the decisions and behavioral things that we do. So we have this primordial reptile brain. The autonomic nervous system is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Some people have heard of the autonomic nervous system. Most people don't understand what it is. You have a stress response and you have a rest response. It's like a seesaw but it's never really in balance and equilibrium. Most of us in today's culture of 8 billion people doing what they do and getting their to-do list done and waking up and ready to rock, most of us are sympathetically driven. Most of us have our foot on the accelerator at all times. And recently with the advent of technology and most of us being tethered to a phone and externally stimulated all the time, it's gotten worse. So we have an autonomic nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic. We have a reptile piece of our brain, fight, flight, or freeze, managing fear, stress, anxiety, depression, and worry. We also have a central nervous system, and the central nervous system has one primary function, self-preservation, keep me alive. Now, the central nervous system is constantly evaluating your surroundings, and it's looking for anchors. It wants familiarity and security. That's why there's no such thing as a second first impression. That's why when you go to some place new that night, when you go to bed at your normal bedtime, you're exhausted because your central nervous system is not grounded. It doesn't feel safe yet. And the central nervous system has your five senses and your intuition and the autonomic nervous system as its defense tools. So you'll think about, hey, the last time you went to a new city, your brain is in overdrive, man. You're literally trying to figure out what can I anchor to? What looks familiar? If you go to a place and you say you're an American and you go to Asia and everything's in a different language, you're really cast adrift because you can't even anchor to language or understand anything. So that's kind of how we operate. Now in our brain physiology, this part of our brain, our prefrontal and frontal cortex is our thinking. This separates us from primates. And this part of our brain is our cognition, our emotional stability, our left brain logic, our analytical thinking, our problem solving, our personality, our character, our patience, and our presence. This is- That was a lot of words. That was a lot. So it's all personality, our cognition, perseverance, presence. That's all fine. This is what separates you from an animal. An animal doesn't have psychology. A pet Mm -hmm. doesn't have psychology. They don't sit there and think through, you know, psychological conflict. It doesn't work that way. They don't have psychic pain. They have primal instinctual needs and that's it. We are separated this way. So yes, this part of your brain is you. This is your personality and character. This part, the primordial midbrain is the fear, stress, anxiety, depression, worry, fight, flight, or freeze. So here's how the landscape of being a human operates. You guys ready to see how we do what we do? We ready? Okay. Are you ready? The battle of resources every second of every minute of every hour of every day. And the resource battle is in the form of oxygen-rich red blood cells. So where we are oxygenated, our resources are deployed. So when we are in a stressed response, stressed, The frequency is faster and more of our resources, oxygen, rich red blood, are in the reptile part of our brain. We're not getting enough blood flow here. So we're not thinking as clearly. We're certainly not as 
impatient. We're not as present in the moment. We're more judgmental. So fear, fear, which is the second strongest emotion of mankind, fear, consumes our resources and changes the wiring. It changes how we interpret information and it changes how we decide what to do with that information. Isn't that fascinating? So yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting to me to see how judgmental we are of ourselves. We're very, very strict and very judgmental of ourselves and our own behavior. And we're also judgmental of everybody else. Yeah. And we expect our schema, our network of experiences, our integrity, our morals, or whatever it is, to, and we apply them to other people. But if we stopped and took a breath and said, wait a second, we're living in the most stressful period in the history of mankind, the most stressful. We were already in the second great age of anxiety prior to COVID, and now we've exponentially increased the stress load. Okay, well, we're all this stress. We're really not in a place of presence. We're not really in a place of calm. We're not really in a place of grounded. We're not healthy, and we're certainly not in a place where you could call yourself yourself. So we should take a breath, and we should be a lot less critical of ourselves and the people around us, because we are in pure survival mode at the moment. Okay, so I want to recap a few things. Those of you that are with me, we're getting like major education that really is very impactful in our day to day. So front brain, that's our identity, personality, that's us and it's what separates us from other animals our midbrain is the area that is the stress fight flight freeze all of that it's also connected to our reptilian brain or the reptilian part of our brain reptile brain i'll call it that because people have things about reptilians and we're not that um okay so um so when we are very oxygen oxygenated, we get the resources to that area of the body. So when we're afraid or in fear and anxiety or fight or flight, which many people are all day, um, the most resources go to that area, the midbrain, and the less go to our actual thinking where we could solve it, where we could be ourselves. So because we're not here, we're not actually ourselves. That's huge. We're not, when we're in fight or flight, we're not actually our real total selves because there's, we're not getting the flow that we need there. Yeah. And the other thing is everybody together, Livia with me, deep breath. Oh, Jim's got a real deep breath. I need to up my breathing. Wim Hof, here we come. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. I'm going to be graceful with myself because that is the message of this. I will not judge myself for not breathing as deeply as Mr. Jim Poole just did. And you shouldn't judge yourself either. That's the other message is when you see yourself uh, messing up, not staying in alignment with your vision, your values, like take a breath, take a breather, because most of the world right now we've been in a pressure cooker and most of us and the media is set up that way purposely not purposely but most of us are in this fight or flight which means you're not operating with all your resources and you're not even operating as the person you know yourself to be and that you're aligned with being so when you snap at someone or you get frustrated or blah 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 don't do the diet plan like breathe have grace for yourself, have grace for others, and realize that it's actually a biological thing that's happening right now. It's not that you're just an, <laughs> right? It's a, it's a biological thing. Okay, that, that's powerful. And you're gonna share with us how we can access more of those yes. resources with your tools and with our own, if we don't, when we don't have the tool. Okay, Couple I'm more here things. for it. Couple more things to be yes. aware of. Um, and you know, awareness is important and understanding is important so that we can make decisions based on awareness. But if we're unaware, you can't decide to make any changes because you have no idea. That's what perplexes me. How come we're never educated on any of this stuff? 
Well, there's another piece of the puzzle that's important for us to note, because the judgment piece is really demonstratively negative for our own sense of self-worth and our decision making. Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, this reptile part of our brain has 40 million years of neuronal circuitry evolution. 40 million years. 40 million. Think about how much you've learned since March 2020 when COVID really just started to take hold and grip and change how we function. Think how much you've learned and adapted in the two and a half years since COVID started. Two and a half years. Okay. Think about how much your brain has learned in 40 million years. So if you want a defined expert system that knows how to protect you, that's it. Now, the challenge is this prefrontal cortex, this evolution of man, homo sapien, is 4 million years of evolution. All right. So let me get this straight. Every day <laughs> we wake up, we are battling a 36 million year head start by the reptilian part of our brain, which governs fear, stress, anxiety, depression, and worry. I think when we understand the landscape of what it means to be a human, I think that really helps us down kind of regulate our, our critical judgment of ourselves because we are networked and we are do have this circuitry. And we're thankful for that circuitry because that circuitry keeps us alive. We call it intuition. And as a human, you've got three kind of areas that help you with decision making. You've got your brain, you've got your heart, and you've got your gut. And this enteric brain in our gut has a lot of neurons. We call that our intuition. But unfortunately, many of us override our gut with our brain because our heart says, no, that's a good person. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. All, the, all the nuances of being a human. There's so much complexity to it. There's so much fun in learning about it, whether you're understanding evolutionary psychobiology or social psychology. It's fascinating when we know what the playing field is. I'm going to give you guys one more understanding of what it means to be human. Every morning when we wake up, if we don't work the graveyard shift, cortisol is at the highest level in the morning because it has to get your brainwave frequency out of the slowest brainwave, which is delta. So cortisol levels are the highest in the morning. This is what wakes you up. Okay, great. Now, as you wake up, what are lights permeating your your windows or your alarm goes off and then your brain turns on. The first thing that activates is the amygdala, which is the resource center for the primordial reptile brain. The amygdala, this almond shaped piece of our brain <laughs> dictates our behavior and our thinking is the first thing that activates in the morning. So let's stop and reflect on what that means. Mm -hmm. That means that the first thing I think of as I'm evaluating my day is not, I'm going to have a great day. People really like me. I love people. I'm <laughs> filled with grace and gratitude and love and, and empathy and joy. No, I'm thinking about all the traps I'm going to fall into today. I'm thinking about all the things I didn't uh, complete yesterday. I'm thinking about all the conflict I have to resolve today. What? That's how the brain is wired, ladies and gentlemen. You are not alone. If the first I'm thing you look at, I just have to jump in. This is huge because um, I usually wake up really refreshed, actually. I and I have a process of putting my dreams to work before I go to sleep by asking certain questions. But there were some days that I woke up like shaking and nervous and I thought something was wrong like okay I, yeah I need to calm myself and compared to the way I normally feel it was an indication like okay something's up here what am I not solving but um hearing what you're saying uh, makes it like hey there is nothing wrong that's actually very normal and maybe I just was carrying more intense things or higher responsibilities at the moment or something. Um, this was like five months ago that, that, that it was a very distinct moment. And I, I, I did what I do. My affirmation said my prayers, started reading outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill, you know, and I, I felt fine, got into the gym, but, but it did stand out. And so you're, you're having this make a lot of sense uh, to me. And 
I've listened to before. So thank you. So, so typically um, we have a narrative. We all have a narrative. We all protect ourselves from our internal lack of sense, sense of self-worth or insecurity. I call it the itty bitty shitty committee. You know, the committee that, sits <laughs> the that, that tells you all committee. the things that you're not good at. That's the amygdala. Yeah. The amygdala is designed for self-preservation and survival. If the amygdala had its way, you'd never take any risk. You'd never leave your home. Because if you don't take risk, you don't fail. So it's we're, we're mapped that way. You know, uh, we're mapped to gravitate to the negative because our brain says, hey, you're going to fail here. We don't gravitate to the positive. So we all have a narrative, okay? And that narrative protects us during the day so that hopefully we can guard against anxious attacks and panic attacks. But the fact that you woke up five months ago with a couple of days where you were kind of off balance, you were protecting yourself from some kind of transition. It's a life change, whether someone was ill or you were moving or transitioning. No, I can tell you exactly what it was because this is important. It may not have been five. It could have been whenever Livia and I first started working together. I got so pumped about what we're doing. And then that morning I thought, is my daughter going to be safe? That, that was the first thought, right? And it, and it had me like riveted right? Are we safe? Is everybody safe here? Am I bringing it to, and then I went into my own prayer states and outwitting the devil. And it was right before I went to the Napoleon Hill Foundation and met Eric Sorensen. And we had that whole thing. Um, so you're right on that. It was a big transition and, and it hit home in a different way. Yeah. So I think the overlying theme here is simple. Let's not think that of the 8 billion people that walk the earth today, that we are alone because we're not. Yeah. Let's understand the landscape and the circuitry of our brain. Our brain's amazing, but our brain has some mechanisms that are in place that we don't really control and, and most of us don't even understand it. And let's be less judgmental of ourselves and others. Let's be more giving, let's, let's take a breath. So we have this architecture of our brain where 4 million years of evolution is my personality and my character and my patience and my presence and my emotion and my logic and my executive functioning. This is where I want to play. But a lot of times things will trigger and you'll go down an anxious path or a worrisome path or a stress path. And the resources leave this part and they go here and we can feel mm -hmm. it manifest in our body because the resources mobilize, they leave your extremities and they go to your visceral organs and you get shallowness of breath. It's all about breath. So breathing is really important because oxygen is the key element to healing and high performance functioning, oxygen. So if I can oxygenate my body by virtue of oxygenating my body, I'm also oxygenating key areas of my brain. You could call this feeding your forehead. Feed my forehead the opportunity so that my brain has access to me. So with that being the landscape, the key is take a breath. Take a chill and stop being so hard on yourself. We have a lot going on externally and we're amazing internally, but we have to figure out how to manage and kind of gain some control over this aspect of our brain. And I think simply having awareness to how the brain is networked and mapped and the physiology and the evolution is really helpful. So now we get to change wow. gears and talk before about- Before we change gears, yes. before we change gears, Jim, um, because our entrepreneurs and everybody watching, they're on a journey with us. And a lot of times we'll throw in a story or a recap because stories help ground it in sometimes and also create connection that what you said, we're not alone. We all walk through this at every level of life. Um, this comes up for different reasons for people. The education that you just laid out makes it very accessible to understand Oh, I need to feed my forehead. I'm just going to picture this like feed me, feed me, but like the hungry hippo game, but um, with breath and with chilling and with breathing. And you even threw in that when we're, we have grace, you didn't use that word, but you know, lighten up and not be so hard on ourselves, not judge ourselves and others so much that even calms the nervous system. So yeah. breath and self like talk and then realizing that yeah you're not totally in yourself right now so take a moment to feed that forward part so you can yeah. be more fully resourced 
everybody can do that no matter where you are in the world if you never go another place with us however i i think you're going to switch into the gear of new common before you, before we do that i want to say personally that I've been using different elements of new calm daily um, and others that I get to add in more. And, um, and it's been wonderful for me. And even the part, the ignite part um, that is more for working out, it has some really great power statements. So I know a lot of you entrepreneurs, speakers, you already have a gratitude practice in the morning, right? Um, this particular one sets my day when I work out listening, stacking that gratitude, looping it several times. And then with certainty, when I'm walking into a whole bunch of uncertain situations, which that's what you're doing as an entrepreneur that has to pivot and move and create. And um, so uh, I'm so excited about what you've developed. And I know you're going to talk more about the more important than even what I just shared but I wanted to give my props. No, wonderful. Thank you for the color commentary. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> entrepreneur, entrepreneurism. Entrepreneurism is amazing. And it's a gift. And it's a privilege. And it's an honor to even consider yourself an entrepreneur. And it comes with a tremendous amount of pressure. It's very lonely at the top. Right, Livia? It's lonely at the top. When you're a true entrepreneur and a true leader, you have a lot of secrets because you don't share a lot of negativity with your team and the people around you because that's not real leadership. And so there's a gap in ability to disseminate some of the pressure that you're under and you hold a lot here. And it's hard. I look at entrepreneurism and I, and I think of three Ps for myself personally. And I look at passion. You have to be passionate to be an entrepreneur because you have to get up every day and it's you. It's you against the world, whatever that looks like, whatever endeavor you're in. You have to have purpose because if you have purpose, then you're not really working because the amount of hours time sacrifice is incredible for an entrepreneur. And it, the sacrifice creates a lot of dysfunction at home and a, and a real challenge for balance. And it's important that we know the landscape as we endeavor to persevere into entrepreneurialism. And then last is patience. You can have the best vision in the world, but humans are slow to adopt. And they're slow to evolve because the central nervous system, remember, is always looking for familiar and insecurity. So if you're pioneering something and the brain has no point of reference, it freaks out. So it's really important for me personally, as I think of entrepreneurism and what we do. And I, I went to the number one entrepreneurial business school in the world, Babson. Great. I love entrepreneurial work. I love working with entrepreneurs. Patience. Passion and purpose has guided me. And I'm going to talk now about the patient side because patience is unique for any AAA personality who wants to just go, 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 go. It's very frustrating because the audience may not be ready, ready, ready for what you're going for. So that's the patience piece. It doesn't mean passive. It doesn't mean uh, lazy. It doesn't mean, hey, let's not go get it. It's understanding how to impact humanity without imposing your will because humans of free will, especially in America, you can't really impose your will on a human. And if you think you can, you're mistaken. You need to start from ground zero. What you can do is educate, inspire, and drive. You can do that, but you can't impose your will. Dr. Holloway, uh, everybody should be blessed with a mentor of this caliber. I am so lucky to have had him in my life. He was my dear mentor, and we were together on this journey for 12 plus years. Unfortunately, he passed away at 73 years old on December 20th of 2020. Blake Holloway was a victim of abuse himself at an early age, childhood trauma. And childhood trauma is functionally challenging because the brain hasn't evolved yet, and we don't have the social skills to be able to compartmentalize the trauma. And many of us never really resolve that. And I'm pretty sure he carried that trauma and those scars for the entirety of his life. But Blake was the most brilliant human being to ever cross my path. And he was a quantum physicist, neuroscientist, naturopath, and he had a clinical practice in Texas, and he worked with thousands of trauma victims, two types of profiles, 
males coming out of the theater of war. And unfortunately, with the Iraq war in Afghanistan, there was a lot of people for him to work on. Females coming out of abuse, ritualistic abuse, systemic abuse, rape, physical, violent, whatever that is. So his profile of people that he loved to help were trauma and complex trauma. He started the invention path of Newcomb 33 years ago. I mean, it's unbelievable to me, 33 years. Now, if you ever were in the presence or you hear one of his tapes or videos, you'll know immediately within a minute, his brilliance is off the scale. And it took him 19 years to figure out the Newcomb concept. And the whole concept here is in theory, relatively simple. Find a way to trick and pace brainwave function to a desired outcome that helps you either go up or go down. Specifically, Newcomb was designed to slow down brainwave function into alpha and theta, whereas alpha is creativity, relaxation, and restoration, but theta is the healing zone. And to do this, the complexity is incredible and overwhelming. But over 19 years, Dr. Holloway figured out how the brain works, how the brain was going to compensate for any activity we presented to it, the brain's incredible. Your body has trillions of cells and is a closed loop ecosystem that has any mechanism. You do anything to your body, it responds. So Blake Holloway's inventive genius was like looking at it saying, if I do this, it's going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then it's going to do this. And then all these different iterations of compensation Essentially, what he did was created a very complex software software that involves algorithms, mathematics, and physics, using the ears as a carrier to present your brain with a signal, and your brain follows that signal, okay? Mm -hmm. So how complex? Well, each track, even though you hear music, music's about 5 to 10 megabytes. Each journey of Newcom is over 1.5 gigabytes, we're talking about hundreds of times greater in size. So it's not music. Music by itself cannot change the mental state of a human being. It can amp you up for a little bit or take you down. If you notice, if you work out and ACDC is your jam, you listen to it for the first while, but then you get bored of it. You get bored of any type of music on a consistent basis because your brain loves patterns. And once it figures out the pattern, it gets bored. So it's not about music. Music is not going to change your mental state. It's about the physics. The music's just a nice carrier. So Blake figured out New Calm. New Calm can replace and has replaced anesthesia or antidepressants or anti-anxiety drugs. Why? The central nervous system is one aspect of your body and the autonomic nervous system is another aspect of your body. And if you recall recently, earlier, I said, hey, the autonomic nervous system governs fear, stress, anxiety, depression, and worry. But a pharmaceutical agent, an antidepressant, is a central nervous system suppressant. So wait a second. I may not be a mathematical genius, but if a problem is an autonomic nervous system problem, why giving me a central nervous system suppressant is going to solve the problem doesn't make sense. And it doesn't solve the problem. All an anti-anxiety or antidepressant drug does is suppress the symptomology. It shuts down your central nervous system. It dulls you doesn't address the problem. Blake was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not giving people narcotic-based pharmaceuticals and faking like they're going to get well, because all I'm doing is condemning them to a life of misery and eventual suicide, because they are not cowards. But at some point, you just get so tired of living like that. So this was developed in that landscape. When I got involved, the first thing I did was created a medical advisory board of 52 of the best, brightest academicians, scientists, and doctors I could find from Harvard Medical School, NASA, the former medical director of the NFL. And I said, hey, my scientist created the only technology known to mankind to lower stress and improve sleep without drugs. Are you interested in evaluating it? We went through the course that businesses have to go through, and we followed the path of a class three medical device, the highest regulated FDA classification known to mankind. We went through the FDA, we went through Health Canada, we went through the military, we went through NSF certified for sport, we went through the Chinese government, we went through the patents, 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 clinical proof, 
Today, Nucom has been used in over 2 million surgical procedures, replacing general anesthesia, listening to our physics. So if you want to know if this is real and true and powerful, there you go. Have yourself cut open with something else and be like, yeah, I'm going to listen to ACDC and come on, cut me open. No, thank you. <laughs> so that's how powerful that is. And what he did was create a way for us humans to downregulate our stress response with no effort. The only effort I have to put in is I have to find a comfortable place that's safe. I lie down, I put the physics on, my brain slows down, I levitate in this healing state, and I become well. That's it. Now, there are other alternatives to this. Breathing and breath and oxygen is the key healing element to mankind. The challenge that I see in our lifestyle and our thinking and our to-do list and our self-importance is this. We may know intuitively, even though we don't understand it, mindfulness is important to me, but I don't know what that means. Meditation is important, but I don't know what that means. Yoga, Tai Chi, breathing. There are four really easy things for us to use. Yoga, Tai Chi, breathing, meditation. Those are the four aspects of mindfulness that are kind of known. Any of those, if you become an expert in them, are amazing and they will downregulate your stress response and create balance of the autonomic nervous system. It'll balance the energy flow. So feed my forehead. That's what that's about. The challenge that I see in traversing the world the last 14 years, most humans either don't understand mindfulness or will not have the determined, persistent, patient approach to take care of themselves because their to-do list or the demands from their kids or their employees or their travel, whatever comes up, they always gravitate to that first and put themselves second, especially the female population. Mamas are amazingly gifted at putting themselves last. So by the end of the night, they're like, uh, there's very few mamas that have <laughs> fallen asleep because they're exhausted. Now they get up in the middle of the night and they worry about shit, but for the most part, they're like, uh, <laughs> that's what this is about. This is a tool that helps humanity downregulate the stress response with a level of, of efficacy and power never known to man. We have the only patent in the world for balancing the health of the human autonomic nervous system. That took us five years of research studying stage four cancer and the Chicago Blackhawks working with the world's leading statistical biophysicists, Chung Kang Pang, and NASA mathematicians. You want highly sensitive, accurate data, that's what we did. And we proved irrefutable quantified evidence that Newcomb systematically, predictably, and safely relaxes the mind and body within minutes and provides that value with limited effort. So for 14 years, Adoria and Livia, I've been using this technology and there's been an accumulation of subtleties. There's been some cathartic moments where I really had this breakthrough. But for 14 years, I have shifted my energy source. And I can't tell you, as a CEO of a global neuroscience company who travels 250, 300 days a year, I can't tell you the last time I burned a single calorie on fear, stress, anxiety, depression, or worry. Because I don't. Mm. I don't. I live that present. That lovely. Moment. It's a right? lovely way Olivia, to live. Doesn't that sound lovely? I haven't burned a single calorie on fear, stress, anxiety. And that's through conditioning it over time, useless. through using the, the new, okay, Livia, we have to start. You and I, you're my accountability partner, Livia. Yes. <laughs> you promise? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. For sure. We gotta, okay, we gotta, so we gotta do this. We have yeah. to do this. And you and I both, uh, yeah, we, we, we need to do this. So we're going to keep each other accountable and world will keep you posted on how we're doing. Uh, so Olivia, we called it out on front street. So now, and Jim will know if we did or not, he has our app usage. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I do. Big brother is watching. Yeah. So a couple of things to <laughs> clarify before we move on. Number one, this used to be a $5,995 class three FDA regulated medical device used to be. Yeah. Well, you can't solve world's problems and liberate humanity from stress selling a complicated four component expensive device. So for years, we've been on this continuous path to try to make it easier to use and more affordable, easier to use, more affordable, easier to use, more affordable. And in November of 2021, we successfully transitioned from a class three medical device to a consumer product. 
didn't compromise efficacy. It's actually stronger. We've gone from Nucom 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0, and we now deliver $38 million of the world's most powerful neuroacoustic software, patented clinically proven physics through an app. That's brilliant. <laughs> the price has gone down by over 99%. So in the last year, we have quintupled our usage base. We've done over 165 million minutes of Nucom in the last year. 165 million minutes. So who uses New Calm? Historically, it was a whole the medical community and doctors. But we do a lot of work with stage four cancer. We've been working with stage four cancer in the comprehensive cancer wellness program led by Dr. Janet Ranicky for nine years. We've been working with the Department of Defense, Navy SEAL, Special Forces, Air Force Special Operations Command, Border Patrol, BORTAC, BORSTAR, the FBI, the FBI House and Rescue Team since 2013. We've been working with 54 professional sports teams since 2011. We work with pilots, moms, dads, students. Everybody that we've come across across the globe has the same challenge, and that's managing stress every day. It is true that the external environment and your relationships and your history and your thinking and your job and all that stuff is unique, but the physiology of the human stress response is identical for 8 billion people. A stress comes in, the amygdala is triggered, the body does its thing, mobilizes for a threat, you become anxious, fearful, worrisome, whatever. So we have been helping humanity for 33 years, 14 years clinically, take care of themselves using physics. You have a headphone, you have an app, and we will literally put you in a meditative state of healing with limited effort. This is really important. And you know, for us, business development is COVID. Business development is insanity. That's not cool. For 14 years, I've been lecturing about the virtues of applied neuropsychobiology and sleep and restoration and recovery. 14 years ago, no one cared. And probably as, as recently as five years ago, people thought, hey, I only sleep two hours. It's a badge of honor. I'm like, it's a badge of death because you're going to die a premature, <laughs> nasty death, right? You can't override the body's need for sleep. So our technology is brilliant in its ease of use and powerful in what we've done and how we've done it. So- we're here to literally help people trying to resolve conflict trauma, knowing that on their own, if you ask somebody coming out of trauma to meditate, you're simply giving them a cycle of shame because they'll have no idea what you're even talking about, but isolate them and tell them to close their eyes or try to focus on something. Their trauma brain has compromised and changed the physiology. But if we can oxygenate this part of the brain over time, what Nucom does, it is separates the emotion from the memory and stops the autonomic nervous system craziness. Oh that my goodness. Well, clear. this is so, wow, so powerful and, and profound for, first of all, the survivors. And you've been so gracious, Jim, that, you know, all of the, of our academy and all of, of the teachings in there go the nonprofits get it free and specifically the survivors and right away when we started talking you said we need to get this to them absolutely we're delivering it to all of them to help with their healing process um, and we're all everybody it's not to that scale but entrepreneurs being able to be in an optimal state guided by our true identity you've taught me so much there like I will never be the same knowing that I need to feed my forehead and breathe and that I'm not myself <laughs> no wonder right any of you have been in a heated moment it's like you're hovering over while you watch yourself blow the cats get out of the lab, right so um you know, whether it's through stress and frustration or, you know, just confusion, lack of clarity, fight, flight, freeze. Um, I really believe our entrepreneurs, they are leading economy and they are providing jobs, opportunities, peace of mind. I think I was talking with you, Jim, while they're, while entrepreneurs are thinking about, um, how to pay their employees and how to make the world a better place. Their employees are out on vacation, right? So every everybody right now, more than ever, we need ways to truest selves, to calm our resources, to regain our health. And you've provided real tips that we can use right away. 
and you have an actual very affordable technology that we are super excited to use. Libby and I will have more uh, testimonials for you. And then I'm, I pulled up my phone because you've done something really awesome for us and Livia doesn't even know. So all of you here know that we've got three different offers that we're talking about in this event that 100% of the profits goes to getting this strike one complete of the mission and of, of the harbor being funded 24 seven. So the kids don't go on the street at nine. It's just strike one, but it's a big one and we get to win together. So Jim has uh, put together a couple of things for those of you that get the thousand dollar offer with the hoodie and the names and the courses, Jim is give or not Jim. Sorry, I was saying it is Jim. Jim Quick, Jim Pool. Um, <laughs> Thirty days free access to Quick State, powered by Newcom, and that's uh, it's a collaboration between Jim Quick and Newcom. So that's really powerful for those of you that got the twenty five hundred dollar package with all the event tickets, the hoodie, everything else. Of course, you're going to get the 30 day uh, quick, <laughs> quick state. And then we'll let you describe what these things are. But you're going to get 30 days free access to premium Newcom um, software. And it has rescue, which is the one Livia and I really need to be focused on, even though I spend a lot of time in Ignite daily, <laughs> but in deep sleep. Uh, rescue, reboot, recharge, focus, ignite, and deep sleep. And then those that did our $10,000 package where you're coming to mastermind with us and we're going to Albuquerque, New Mexico, we're going to visit the harbor, we're going to take that uh, self-defense class from our UFC um, partners. Um, and we're, we're uh, confirming who that's going to be. So I'm not saying it out loud right now, but uh, I believe I know who it is. Could be more, but you're going to get one year's free access to the premium Newcom. And we asked Jim, we we're like, hey, we'll work in your percentage because we want you to win too. And he was like, my company isn't going to be made on this. I'm mission oriented. I absolutely want to make sure that we get this done. And so thank you so much for that generosity. And any of you who take that package two or three, we can play a game inside of Facebook, uh, like an accountability thread to see if uh, if you and uh, you live, you all, Livia and I, we can run the numbers and we can't lie. I mean, we can pretend, but Jim Poole knows the actual numbers, so he'll know if we were if we were running our uh, our yeah. rescue or not. And, uh, yes, Livia. And I just want to say something, yeah, but it's just so amazing because it's just play, it's just like I love um, how what he said too, right? There's there's other things you can do, but there's always a path of resistance. I am that resistance like I am that person that can close my eyes and go somewhere nice in my mind I, I, I am that person 100% uh, and that's why I, my only my only route is to stay busy I learned that when I was 15 years old and I never looked back right but like you mentioned there right um, you know there is uh, you know side effects um, to that right there's a lot of side effects and I'm aware of it and I've been just you know flying to not touch the floor, right? Um, but that's you know. So I, I really identify myself with it, uh, you know. And I and I and I listened, and I, I, I and it's just like it, it's just amazing tool for the most resistant people. Like I, I've never met anyone anybody more resistant than me for my own reasons, right? But it's just it's amazing. But for me though, knowing that, knowing that, and having experienced that, knowing you know how resistant I am, and then you know downloading the app and listening to it. You know, it just makes me so happy to really know that we're providing this to, to who needs. And uh, and how Jim, right on our first call, uh, we we're talking about survivors. And, uh, you know, we say that we don't call it a success until, you know, these kids, right, that adults, you know, whatever stage of life they are, they are thriving as an individual. And, and that part is being the hardest, right? We work with so many nonprofits and it's been the hardest obstacle. And on our first call, you know, and you know, Jim, who is a CEO, who is so busy, who has so much in his plate, right? He could recognize and describe, right? How the brain of these people work and how, right? How we're all 
like the perspective on it that we have on it are just so wrong, right? And and that there needs to be a tool. And I'm just so glad that we're able to provide that, that, that right there, right? It's just like, there's nothing more powerful and more impactful um, than putting that in the hands of who needs. And I'm just so grateful for you for creating, for dedicating your life to this, right? And uh, and to allowing us to to bring that to, to who needs. I just, you know, because it is just so amazing and there's just so much, so many obstacles, right? And to be able to just like tackle those downs with something like this is just incredible. So for me, I just wanna say thank you. It's incredible, right? Just the work behind it, really, right? And so thank you so much. Appreciate you so much. Um, you know, Shelly and the Harbor, we're all very, very thankful. And I know, you know, each each day we're just gonna, you know, have more people feeling the same way and uh, and being able to to access who they are. I love that you said that today, being able to access who you are, you know, for those that had no opportunity to even getting close to that, right? So thank you so much. And that's all I wanted to say to all this, so. Amazing, yeah, we're, we're all so grateful. I mean, we're bringing it back because the main reason we played this game of how can we contribute to entrepreneurs and give them so much value and do what we're normally doing and at the same time take care of people that cannot take care of themselves right now and take care of the people that are taking care of those people um, and what's so awesome about this is your heart for generosity and like you started this interview with that when you're at a certain level in entrepreneurship to make it long term you have to be in integrity. You have to have your alignment and character and morals lined up. And, and that is who you are. Your whole company is dedicated to the elevation of humanity, period. It was founded by your mentor um, through unfortunate trauma and the desire to help so many. And he did help so many. And yet it's not just a feel good altruistic idea, which I shouldn't have said not just because that's where everything uh, begins, but it has real clinical studies, very high level, and you're helping at the highest level, which is who we believe we purposely attract into these kinds of environments. You that are watching, you are the highest level. You're leading, you're taking on more because you're about contribution. You're about the elevation of humanity through your services, your products, your business, your own healing. And so I love that we get to give to the survivors, but that we get to give to ourselves and to the leaders that are drawn to our community because then they're better, they're more in, they're feeding their foreheads, <laughs> they're in their true identity and aligned with their highest calling so that they can move their own visions and messages forward. And when we all do that, we uprise together, we lift, uh, lift it all together. So thank you, a full package today of what you've given to us, whether anybody does anything else, we all have tools and understanding um, but those who do step forward and either get the app, come on board with, you know, one of the levels that we're playing and, and go deeper that, that you really are changing the world. And it's an honor to be in collaboration uh, with you. And, and we meet a lot of people, but your heart and, and your actions show that. So thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. Um, before we say goodbye, I want to thank everybody for being here, paying attention, contributing, whether it's $1,000, $2,500, $10,000, the cause is enormous. The problem is big. The problem is nefarious. The problem is dark. The problem is complex. But without Livia and Adora and organizations like this, the problem doesn't get solved. So my applause and my gratitude and my honor and integrity are coming back to the two of you as you guys have stepped up to put forth your entrepreneurial spirit, your ambition, your time, your energy, your effort, your sacrifice, your persistence, your perseverance, all the things that entrepreneurs have to bring to the table. And you're focused on giving back and helping. So um, 
It's amazing. And it is amazing when people that follow their, their heart centeredness and they do things for the right reason when no one else is looking and we can collaborate. It's been a natural and I feel so honored that we can contribute in any manner possible because these kids deserve our love, our support, our lack of judgment and good for you. So thank you. And thank everybody for listening. Mm, well said. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you so much.